1. So my buddy lives in a township on about a little over three acres of property, and his neighbor is apparently insane and has now focused in on him. Not too long ago, the SWAT team showed up at the crazy neighbor's house because of him and his wife. We're in the middle of a knife fight in the front lawn and he was all bloody. Flash forward this week, my buddy runs out his backyard to dog owners for their dogs to play in his backyard, which is roughly three acres, it's all fenced in, like a private dog park. There's usually not more than one or two people at a time, and normally between one and four dogs at a time. Well, the neighbor decided he doesn't like the dogs, so he's decided to put a chair three feet away from his fence, directly next to his buddy's driveway, and sits there with an air rifle all day, and I mean all day and tries to intimidate anybody that comes to my buddy's house. He will follow him up and down the fence line and yell at people and tell them that the water is poisoned in my buddy's house and it will kill their dogs. The other day this escalated. When my buddy's wife and kids were in the backyard and he was in the house, he got a call from his wife saying the neighbor was sitting on his porch pointing a handgun towards him. My buddy looked out the window and saw it and immediately went outside and the guy then put it down and went in his garage. Keep in mind the difference and distance from the back of my buddy's house to the front of the neighbor's house, probably 150 yards. The neighbor's house is built to the very back of his lot, where my buddy's is built closer to the street. And then yesterday his mother-in-law was letting dogs out and his front yard was so completely fenced in, and the neighbor was up by his mailbox, and as he walked back and the dogs were barking, the mother-in-law said that he pointed a gun at her and the dogs. So he called the sheriff's department and they talked to the guy but nothing was done. And he continues to sit on the property line. My buddy has a bunch of cameras set up but unfortunately the one at the front of the house wasn't working at the time and the ones at the back of the house can't see that far away. So I brought over a couple of extra ones I had for him to hook up and gave him suggestions for some telephoto options. When I went over to his house, I was carrying my pistol and kept an eye on the neighbor the entire time we were walking around his yard and my buddy carries a pistol on him as well. I told him the main thing that he needs to do is get it on video, the guy pointing the guns along with any intimidation. And at the very least, that should justify a restraining order. But I also let him know, legally speaking, the second his neighbor raises a gun at his wife or kids, he is 100% justified under the law in coming out of his front door and shooting the guy in the face. But he definitely would want to have that on video as well to cover himself. Update 1. So I just got off the phone with my buddy. He just had the sheriff at his house last night because he discovered a pellet wound on his dog's leg. Luckily the dog was okay, but the pellet was not embedded in his skin, so without that there's no evidence that the neighbor did it. But to add evidence to the restraining order on what a threat this guy is, the two sheriff's deputies walked through my buddy's backyard down to his fence with their flashlights and the crazy neighbor came flying out of his house in his underwear with his rifle in his hand, screaming at the flashlights, thinking it was my buddy and his wife. He's got the two new cameras I gave him set up and running and he's going to be ordering the telephoto cam soon. I told him to keep his rifle loaded by the front door in case he needs to handle the problem quickly. Update 2 he has a court date for this Friday about a civil protection order. He was granted a temporary protection order as of last Thursday, and part of that order says that he was supposed to surrender any weapons to the sheriff's department and not have any communication or contacts with the neighbors, not be within a hundred feet of them. Of course, he began breaking those rules within 30 seconds of the temporary protection order being served to him last week. He surrendered no weapons to the sheriff's department and claimed he had none. Even though this sheriff was just out there days before and witnessed him in possession of a handgun along with an air rifle. The sheriff told my buddy they couldn't do anything about it until they had a search warrant. And the very next day he was back on the property line shooting the air rifle and yelling randomly into the air. Sheriffs were called again and warned the neighbor of his actions but that was it. I told my buddy to make sure to document each and every violation on video and save it for this Friday's court hearing. After looking, the guy's name came up on the local court website. It turns out he was convicted of aggravated menacing against his other neighbor for doing this exact same thing and he served six months in jail. I told my buddy to make sure the judge knows that. 
He wants assurance from the court that all the weapons are actually removed and unsafe shooting range on the property is moved to the rear of his property and properly built or removed altogether. And further interactions, not just be warnings and actual enforcement. Update 3. The neighbor didn't show for court. The judge extended the PO for six months and made it clear that it doesn't matter if the guy is in his own yard. If my buddy is outside, the neighbor better pick up and move 100 feet away. Hopefully now the sheriff will enforce it this way. 2. So we moved into a pretty secluded area in the country, Oklahoma, with a few neighbors. Ten acres down is my neighbor from hell. Directly across from me, about two acres away, is an extremely nosy neighbor. First guy we'll call Jay. Proceeds to get to know us by telling me he's okay with me being black. I hate labels and attention to my skin color. Each time he has stopped by, three or four, he says off-the-wall stuff like, I'm gonna come through your tree line and watch you shower at night, in front of his demented wife. She seems to like it when he acts like that, so neighbor two. For the first three months of being here, each neighbor that passed our house drove by with their phones out filming us. Then they proceeded to get into our business. Foolishness in our part in the beginning. His very first couple of questions in the beginning came off as really too personal. Neighbor one. Then he found me on Facebook without me even telling him my info. Said I just want to know who moves into my area, making sure y'all aren't crackheads. Now this was an insult, as it's typically used in a degrading way. This after mentioning my skin tone. I'm not about that life at all. Homestead and farm life, that sounds. So two days ago, neighbor one has the crazy wife. She messages me about cats two days later. These same cats were being dropped off in my property line by another one of my neighbors. So we have raw land. Put in water and electric. We don't argue in front of the kids, and today all of the stress of dealing with the VA and everything else just became too much. Our voices were raised outside. Nothing physical. No more yelling rarely happens. It's depressing enough when you become at odds with your spouse. Neighbor one called the cops and lied. He said we didn't have water or electricity, even though they pass our house every day to get to theirs. So our electric pole is pretty freaking obvious. The water meter is freaking obvious. Yes, we have a portable home and cabin that we have to finish building on the side. Neighbor one treats us like garbage because his opening line was, Yeah, I'm rich. I make a lot of money. Why would I care to know that? That's his personal life. We respond with how we have to go and clear some cedar trees by hand. He goes, I worked hard on my land. I had to spend 8k to get it where I want. Again, don't care. Good for you. Some labor is good for the soul, and we'll keep that ego in check. Anyways, what can I legally do? Can I put up a sign on my property that reads Neighbor 1 is a lying dirtbag, or F around and find out sign on my tree? If it says his name on the sign, is that illegal? What can he do? Also, I'm pretty sure on company time, he used his computer to search us up. We are simple people who had a discrepancy, which I agree was irresponsible. We homestead and don't bother anyone. I don't care how petty this is. They want us out of here. We're just trying to live with a purpose. Again, today doesn't define the entire time we've been there. A super respectful smile and wave as everyone passes, etc. This one hurt. I knew he was a dirty snake. I felt uneasy, but I tried to give the benefit of the doubt. Correctional officer lied to the police snow body cam. I should have recorded it, but I'm not used to being in a record everything generation, but I will from now on. The VA had screwed my husband, and we went for months without pay from them. After using our savings on land and the cabin, the VA decided to do that. So we had to play catch up on four months worth of bills, took odd jobs and loans out just to get by. They looked down on us. We are an interracial couple. He is Cherokee with a tribal card, my husband. I didn't think it was relevant to bring up skin tones because I don't have a victimhood mentality or cry racism at every turn. Would these past interactions be the exception? Not sure what to make of it. Obviously treading very lightly. They have connections and money, so maybe wait until after my house is in order or start with the property signs. 
Update. One day after posting this, Jay was seen at the edge of our property line. About 20 minutes later, a single shot from a gun was fired toward our driveway. We have two young kids. We had no choice but to leave quickly in the night after we went home. We decided to let go of the cabin, and instead save up to put a fully furnished finished cabin on the land. Still keeping the land, moved about three hours away, so not terribly far. We still have to load the truck one more time. After that, our stuff will be at the temporary house. My family lets us stay in. 3. After many reports and issues since March, big parties on day three of them being here, even recent domestic violence cops calls and arrests, and kids being taken out of their care, arguments in the parking lot, etc., not cleaning up their new puppy's poop, letting it run through the parking lot off the leash, bash endlessly for two weeks, now above my head all night long, myself and others included are fed up with these neighbors. On Thursday, the upstairs neighbor from hell left her new German Shepherd puppy in the bathroom above mine from 10 p.m. until 2 p.m. the next day, by itself locked in the room. It cried and screamed and bashed and ripped stuff that entire time. When she got home, she let it out for two minutes on the patio above where my door is to poop and pee. It drips down and immediately let it back inside the bedroom above me and shut the door. On Friday... They received their probably fifth noise ordinance violation to their door over this. I received a lease violation for bashing on their wall after not being able to stand it anymore. It said they deserve a right to peace and quiet enjoyment of their unit. Okay, fair enough. I won't bash. I'll just report your every wrong move then. Friday night. After she received the violation, the chick leaves her dog in the bedroom above me locked for the same amount of hours, leading to its sobbing, crying, bashing, ripping for hours on end. She comes home Saturday, does the same thing, lets it out on the patio and back inside, back to the bedroom above me. Saturday night, she does the same thing and comes back at like 5am on Sunday, back earlier this time, takes it outside, unleashed once to poop in the front of my door without cleaning it, immediately takes it back inside to the balcony, gets in her car and leaves for work. So it's Sunday morning and the dog is screaming, crying and trashing his body against the railing of the balcony for over an hour. My downstairs neighbor texted and said, Do you hear their puppy crying again? I responded that I did. I checked the camera. I see the downstairs neighbor outside. She runs upstairs, kicking and punching the upstairs neighbor's door, and finally the guy answers and she walks back down the stairs. She's like, are you effing kidding me? And he's like, what? She's your dog. The dog's screaming and crying on your porch. The dog poop everywhere you don't clean up. The constant disrespect. Is this how you treat an animal? And she was like, you're going to get that dog inside your apartment right now. And then you're going to come down here and clean up your dog's crap, bitch. You think you're going to sleep now, MF? Think again, bitch. And then she walked back to her apartment. The dude actually did come down with the dog on a leash and picked up the poop. It's his sister and his other sisters that have caused the majority of these issues. It's kind of sad for him, but all of his endless amount of sisters are out of control, and he's stuck in it all. I work from home, and my schedule has completely turned backwards. I'm awake at 2.25am, as if it's my morning now. It's been so depressing. I don't understand these type of people, the ones who just have no interest in being a decent human being. We got them welcome gifts, returned their wallet when we found it in the parking lot, found their lost cat and took care of it for a day. They locked it out on the balcony like the dog and weren't home. Giant mean parking lot cat was chasing it down. I just don't get it. It causes this rage within me that I don't ever usually feel. Nothing has ever been reciprocated. I would cough into a pillow when I was sick just in case it could hear my cough. I would even sometimes feel like my opening a chip bag in the middle of the night would be too loud. I laugh now, thinking of me being so concerned of disturbing them after all they have done to everyone around them. I'll never cough into a pillow or worry about a damn chip bag crinkling ever again. I don't know what I'm trying to accomplish by posting this, so if you listen to it, thank you. If you didn't, oh well. I hope all your neighbors from hell stub their toe today. Four. I have lived here for three years and never really even speak with my neighbors because I'm just not really that person. 
But the other night really annoyed me. My little sister, age 19, came by, and when she got out of her car to walk up my sidewalk, a neighbor across the street yelled at her to tell me to cut my lawn. I have MS and can't really do extra expertise things like mowing my lawn, and can't afford to pay someone to do it. My husband works all day and on weekends, so by the time he is often able to mow the lawn, it's too dark outside. So yes, it does get shaggy at times because of this. I went across the street today to ask her not to yell across at my guests anymore, and when I did this, the lady started to yell at me for accusing her and telling me that my sister was lying and that she needed to get her story straight, because she doesn't do that sort of thing. I told her that's fine if it wasn't her, but I was going on the information I'd been given. I even explained that it may not have been her, but someone else on the street that came by her house, because it was two women, out from her home with a couple of dogs. One was a big white dog. I know she doesn't have a big white dog, but a small brown one. She further tried to say that it's likely the neighbors to my left, because since they use the same guy to mow their lawn as she does, the husband there is all uppity about that sort of thing. I told her I doubted it was her because I know that she also doesn't have a large white dog. I had also met that neighbor when her dog came into my yard while my brother-in-law was doing some yard work when he was in town, and had a very good talk with her, and she brought her grandson by to meet my small dog because he likes animals. Well, she said, fine little missy. Really? I'm in my late twenties. You can come over there with me and ask her because she's my only friend in this neighborhood. Oh, so you blamed your friend for this? I tell her, fine, if it will end this, I'll go. I walk over and the lady goes on a rampage to the other neighbor, saying I'm accusing her and how I yelled at her. I didn't even raise my voice. I explain again the information I had about the person yelling across the street to my guests, telling me to mow my lawn, and how I just wanted it to stop no matter who had done it. They both then start harping on me, saying they will start calling the cops on me because of my lawn, and how I'm the rude person for not checking facts before saying something. I'm confused at this point because... WTF. That's literally why I came by when you were outside, was to check if it was her and ask her not to say stuff to my guests. They say now that they want me to leave and I'm trespassing. I say fine, I'll leave. They keep going though, saying how I need to keep my stuff in my yard. I tell them I don't know what you even mean because I don't even really go outside. Yeah, because you're a bunch of vampires. What the hell? I tell them again, no, it's because I have MS and can't do a lot outside in extreme hot or cold weather. I also told her that if she wanted to be this way, then to keep her dog in her own yard. She claims he is never in my yard, and when I said the hell he isn't, she said, well, he only goes over there to poop when he's supposed to. So you admit that you let your dog in my yard. I told her the next time I see him, I'll call the cops or animal control then, if she wants to call the cops on me for my lawn looking shaggy. I've had it now with them. They feed the deer in our neighborhood in the middle of the city, so I constantly have deer in my yard because of them too. The deer have eaten my rosebush that I bought this spring because they're so used to people feeding them that they went on my enclosed deck to eat even them. The husband of the neighbor next to me is an idiot, and when my husband has been mowing our lawn, screamed at him to not get his clippings in their yard. Yet it's fine that the guy they pay gets theirs and ours. I just can't with these people anymore. I want tips on how to legally annoy them as much as possible at this point, because I'm angry and petty. Hellfreezer's note. No, don't legally annoy them or antagonize them. Just ignore them. It sounds like the worst they're doing is saying petty things. Now, you did add in an edit that they're now trolling you on your socials and trying to dox you. That is legally actionable. If they are trying to dox you, you should make a report to the police, start a paper trail. Then if it escalates, there will be a documented history. But as far as deliberately antagonizing them, no, just don't do that. You do not want to be seen as being the aggressor here. That way, if it does get to the point where it has to go to court... You don't look like it, it. It doesn't look like it's mutual hostility, which could probably just really not go well for either of you. I'm not sure what the actual legal term in that would be, but essentially just stay away from them, ignore them, do not be seen as the aggressor. Five. 
let me introduce you to the absolute gem of a human who lives directly across from me, Apartment 6. She moved into our peaceful 8-unit complex in 2020, and like the angel she is, brought bedbugs with her. As if that wasn't enough of a gift to the rest of us, she also enjoys pulling trash in from the sidewalk on trash days. You know, just casually risking a full-blown infestation for all of us, truly a saint. Now back to the bedbug situation. Our lovely friend in apartment 6 was told by the landlord to wrap her mattress in plastic and put it outside for the trash. So what does she do? She covers the middle of her disgusting urine-stained mattress with a plastic sheet, just the middle, mind you, and then leaves it in the courtyard for three weeks. Three damn weeks. The mattress lingered so long I started thinking it has squatter's rights. I called the landlord repeatedly, asking them to get rid of the biohazardous disaster across from me. Thankfully, they finally did, but not before I had enough material to write a horror novel about bedbug-infested mattresses. It only gets better. One fine Tuesday evening at a very respectable 7.30pm, she came home either drunk, high or both, I'm betting on both, and started screaming in the courtyard about how her boyfriend, who by the way lives in a trailer park on someone else's driveway and definitely sells meth, screwed her in the butt and told her to leave. Yes, folks, this is the kind of melodrama you get in a meth-fueled relationship. She just had the entire complex, including my then 9 and 12-year-old children, know the intricate details of her meth trailer escapades. Really, I could have gone my whole life without knowing that, but here we are. Flash forward to 2021, and another neighbor, apartment 4, had a package stolen. Naturally, we all assumed it was meth Barbie in apartment 6. Apartment 4 went to confront her, and it turned into an all-out screaming match because, of course, it did. Meth Barbie doesn't know how to use her indoor voice and is always ready for a fight. After some dude from apartment 4 threatened her, she decided to rat me out to the landlord, claiming my boyfriend was the one doing the threatening. Uh, no honey, we were literally in bed, laughing at your mess of a life. Sorry to disappoint. Fast forward to the present. Meth Barbie has been living the good life, smoking meth in our parking lot, treating her kid worse than an unwanted pet, and blasting ratchet music at full volume from 7.30am until she heads off to her boyfriend's trailer. Do I get a reprieve when she's gone? Of course not. I can still hear her shrieking voice echoing down the block like a meth-fueled banshee who refuses to give me even one moment of peace. Oh, did I mention she used to live with her elderly father and two kids in a one-bedroom apartment? Yeah, and then one day her poor dad just mysteriously disappeared. I can only hope he passed away peacefully, because the way she treated him was horrific. I guess getting dragged to the meth house every weekend wasn't his idea of retirement. But wait, there's more. Earlier this year, she overheard me discussing her very public activities on the phone, because the walls are thin, and I can't talk about her crazy antics in private, apparently. She flew out of her apartment, screaming, What are you waiting for? And slammed her door so hard, her welcome sign is now permanently crooked. I was outside, cleaning my windowsills, minding my own business, so I politely asked, Do you have a problem? Her response, she proceeded to spew some nonsense that I stopped listening to once she called me ghetto. Now I'm sorry, but ghetto is a noun, not an adjective, and it's my trigger word. I calmly informed her that she walks barefoot through the actual ghetto to get meth from her trailer-dwelling boyfriend, who Fs her in the butt and tells her to leave, but sure, I'm the ghetto one here. Well, she's been a real pleasure to live around for the past four years, but now she's throwing beer cans and trash around. It's bad for me, because I could never stoop to her level, but I'm definitely running out of patience. What's the best way to passively aggressively mess with this woman while keeping my reputation squeaky clean? Jatchin's welcome. Hellfreezer's note, best way is simply don't. Anything you do runs the risk of escalating things further and you really don't want that here. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here and thank you very much for listening to Naughty Neighbors 15. Thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Uh, I'm not going to bother with any business this week, I'm really just not in the mood for it. Uh, but I do have a birthday shout-out that I will do before I go because I forgot to do it in an earlier video. So today's shout-out goes to Gloria. Their birthday was on October the 6th. 
I do apologize for missing it, Gloria. I've had a lot going on. Uh, but I hope you had a good one. And before we go, I'll sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gloria. Happy birthday to you. And of course, I'll do my best to remember the one for the other one you requested for for November. Okay. With that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening and take very good care of yourselves.